Your body needs protein, right? But you can't be consuming protein all the time, all day, every day, while you're working out, while you're sleeping. It's just not going to happen. Plus, you'd probably end up having a body composition that you wouldn't particularly care for. So I want to address something called branch chain amino acids, BCAAs. And I want to address how they work in the body. So my name is Thomas DeLauer and I'm on the clinical advisory board for Sheer Strength. I help oversee some of the formulation, but I also help look at some of the science to make sure that we're getting the right ingredients so that people understand exactly what's going in their bodies. And that's going to be the purpose of this video. I want to explain how BCAAs actually work and what they are. Okay, so branched chain amino acids are three amino acids. We've got isoleucine, leucine, and valine. They are what are called essential amino acids, which means we have to get them from the diet or supplementation because the body doesn't produce them naturally. But why are BCAAs, why are these three amino acids so crucial when it comes to muscle building and fitness? You see, it has to do with how these amino acids function within the body. You see, they're actually oxidized in the muscle, which is extremely rare amongst the other amino acids. Most of the amino acids are catabolized and broken down within the liver whereas branched chain amino acids are oxidized and actually flourish within the muscle. So they help us synthesize protein. They help us get more out of our diet and more out of our actual workout. Now, one of the main reasons we wanna focus on branched chain amino acids is when it comes down to muscle breakdown. And I'm gonna explain exactly how that works. You see, when we work out, we have an increased level of oxidation of branched chain amino acids occurring within the muscles. It's a natural process. It happens with protein synthesis and it happens with protein degradation. But what we want to do is we want to keep the serum levels of branched chain amino acids elevated so that we don't go into a deficit. You see, we don't want a negative amount of branched chain amino acids within the muscle because then the body has no choice but to start breaking down the muscle tissue into that usable form. It's kind of a negative perpetual cycle and we want to keep on top of that. Now, if you've additionally ever experienced that delayed onset muscle soreness, the dreaded DOMS as it's called, delayed onset muscle soreness, you've experienced the fact that your body is in a very catabolic state. You've experienced the fact that your body is recovering. It's trying to build muscle. It's trying to synthesize protein. Well, branched chain amino acids can actually help reduce the impact of a workout on the muscle, basically allowing you to synthesize protein faster potentially keeping you from getting as sore so you can potentially get more out of your next workout. So now for the stuff that's gonna blow your mind. Now the fun stuff, talking about the intricacies of BCAAs. Let's break them down. The first and main one that I want to address is leucine. You see, the main role of leucine within the body is to maintain that protein homeostasis within the muscle. So everything I just talked about, keeping that balance so that we don't break down muscle, that is rooted with leucine. And here's how it works. You see, it comes down to something called mTOR. And what that mTOR is, is the mammalian target of rapamycin. Don't worry about that long name, we're just gonna call it mTOR. mTOR is a big switch, very simple. If you have good amounts of mTOR, then you're going to have protein synthesis. If you have bad amounts of mTOR, then you're going to have protein degradation and catabolism, where your body's breaking down muscle tissue. Different amounts of leucine trigger that mTOR switch. If you have elevated serum levels of leucine, the mTOR switch is on. Muscle is activated, protein synthesis is activated, everything is fine and dandy, nitrogen balance is high, and you're able to build muscle and you're able to recover. Leucine levels drop, that switch flips. Boom, you're back to protein degradation and potential catabolism and breakdown of muscle tissue. And to back this up a little bit, I wanna reference a pretty fun 2004 study. So what this study looked at was individuals that were going through the same resistance training program. And these individuals were given different post-workout meals and supplementation. Group one was given just carbohydrates. Group two was given carbohydrates and protein, typically a good combination. Group three was given protein, carbohydrates, and additional leucine. Well, guess what? Guess which ones had the best amount of recovery and the best amount of protein synthesis? Yeah, you guessed it, number three, the ones that had the leucine, because that leucine helped activate the mTOR, which allowed the carbohydrates and allowed the protein to do the job to actually produce muscle and to heal. Okay, so we've covered the gist of leucine, but let's talk about isoleucine. Isoleucine's job is simple. It helps the glucose uptake of the cell within the muscle. 
Glucose uptake is happening throughout our entire body, right? But what we really want to pay attention to is glucose uptake in the muscle cell. And that's where isoleucine comes in. It helps direct that, it helps get glucose into the cell so we can regenerate ATP. We can get that energy metabolism that we need to get onto the next set, to get onto the next exercise and recover faster. Pretty simple. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about valine. Valine is my personal favorite because I like the way it works with the neurochemistry of the brain. I'm fascinated by it. So hear me out on this. The way that valine works is with a direct correlation to tryptophan and serotonin. What does this mean? Okay, I'm gonna explain it. You see, valine and tryptophan compete for the same receptor in the brain. So when you have high levels of valine, valine is gonna occupy that receptor of the brain, meaning your body's able to function, your body's not tired. Now, if you've ever heard of tryptophan, you think Thanksgiving dinner, you think high levels of tryptophan, you think sleep and crash it out on the couch. If your valine levels are low, then your tryptophan levels are going to supersede that and they're gonna occupy that receptor on your brain. What does that mean happens? That means that that tryptophan occupies the receptor and triggers the release of serotonin. Serotonin is good, helps us feel good, but it also makes us relax and get tired. That's that whole correlation between tryptophan and making you tired. So you can see how valine occupying that receptor can allow you to not get fatigued and allow you to not mentally check out when you're in the middle of a workout. So you can see how when you combine all of these amino acids into one group, they become critical for your recovery. But how much of each do you need and how do you know what you need? Okay, ultimately, this is why I sit on the advisory board because I wanna be able to look at these things. And what we found is that a two to one to one ratio seems to be the best. That means two parts leucine for one part isoleucine and one part valine. Seems to be a nice combination where you're getting more of the leucine that you need to stimulate the protein synthesis, but you're still getting the positive effects of the isoleucine and the valine, but you're predominantly focused on the benefits of the leucine. Now I wanna to touch on one more thing before you start just taking your BCAAs and going along your merry way. A lot of people will say that BCAAs will trigger an insulin spike. And although that has been shown in a lot of research, it's actually not a bad thing. You see, we're not talking about ingesting carbohydrates that are spiking your insulin. We're talking about taking BCAAs at the right time where a little bit of an insulin spike might actually help you absorb more of your protein. So if you have a small level of insulin increase throughout the course of your workout because you took some BCAAs, it can actually help you get more out of your post-workout protein with or without carbohydrates. So that's just a little fun fact and I'll do another video talking about the insulin response in a little bit more detail. But as always, keep it locked in here with Sheer Strength Labs. Know what you're putting in your body. Get yourself educated because at the end of the day, a supplement is just a supplement unless you know exactly how it's working within your body so you can get the most out of it. Keep it locked in here with Sheer Strength and I'll see you in the next video.